the coast of Louisiana, a place of beauty and abundance, but it's disappearing. Every hour of every day, of every month, of every year, Louisiana loses a football field of land. That's more than 16 square miles a year. In 10 years, Louisiana could lose the equivalent of Mobile, Alabama, and this sportsman's paradise will be less and less a paradise and more and more open water. This area right here, this uh, uh, used to be the marshland that we normally would trap, trap alongside. Walk the land, mush rats, neutral, idols. But now look, we're riding with the boat. Since the 1930s, Louisiana has lost more than 1,900 square miles of coastal wetlands. The reason for this land loss ranged from natural causes like erosion from tides and the ground sinking from subsidence to man-made causes such as levying the Mississippi River and digging canals for oil and gas exploration and production. You know, you got to have this Mississippi River. It is the heartbeat of Blackwood's Parish. And to me, without it, you can't build it fast enough. It's, it's eating away that fast because this is choked off. When you choke off your, your source, you're done. You got to have some of this. The importance of the Mississippi River is clear if we take a quick geology lesson on coastal Louisiana and how it was formed, creating many different landscape types along the way. Annually, as the river flooded and then returned to normal, mud and sand was left behind, which built swamps, marshes, ridges, and barrier islands. Over time, these processes built new land and formed a series of connections between the fresh river water and the salty Gulf of Mexico. Known as an estuary, this mixing between the rising and falling of the Mississippi River and the Gulf was responsible for creating the diversity of freshwater, brackish, and salty habitats that is home to all the wildlife our coast is known for. As we continue to lose land, several things happen. Salt water from the Gulf of Mexico moves into freshwater ecosystems. We lose the habitat that supports our fisheries, and what once was marsh now becomes open water. The effects of hurricanes on South Louisiana become more intense and damaging, and flooding from storm surge inundates communities. Katrina was terrible. Katrina came down, wiped out, I mean, like a tidal surge, the highest the water I've ever seen in my life. But it's not all doom and gloom. Progress is being made along our coast. Louisiana has a coastal master plan that provides a comprehensive strategy for protecting our communities and restoring the vast ecosystems on our coast. By working together with citizens, industry, and government, along with organizations like the Coalition to Restore Coastal Louisiana, the projects developed in the master plan begin to secure a protected and restored coast over the next 50 years. The master plan was developed using the multiple lines of defense strategy for coastal restoration, meaning that different types of coastal restoration methods work together to stem the tide of land loss in coastal Louisiana. Nowhere is this strategy more evident than in the Barataria Basin. The Barataria Basin is a large geographic area defined by the Mississippi River on the east and Bayou Lafourche to the west. This area of wetlands provides a buffer between the open waters of the Gulf and communities to the north and includes a rich diversity of ecosystems. Each system has a unique blend of components, plants, animals, soils, and water, all of which depend on each other to make a fully functioning estuary. These varying components are what make all of these different areas within the Barataria system so unique and requiring a number of solutions when it comes to fighting land loss. The Barataria Basin offers examples of all the major strategies for restoration. Working together, these projects recreate some of the landscape features that offer protection and habitat. Starting at the Gulf, we are rebuilding barrier islands. Further inland, we are rebuilding large areas of marsh, recreating ridges along bayous, and using a variety of shoreline protection techniques. All of these projects work together to provide greater protection from storms, control the flow of water, and lessen the effects of erosion. When we think of barrier islands, we often think of Grand Island, but that's just one in an entire chain of islands that are Louisiana's first line of defense against the punishing winds and storm surge of tropical storms and hurricanes. East Grand Terre Island is one of several barrier islands that form a protection between incoming storms from the Gulf of Mexico and the interior estuaries, marshes, and communities along our coast. East Grand Terre Island was rebuilt using dredge material off the Gulf of Mexico. As you can see, the consistency of the material is mostly shells, 
and sand. In addition to providing storm protection, this island also offers lots of habitat for nesting birds and other wildlife. Marsh creation and ridge restoration projects are also key components to the overall strategy. One such project, the Bayou DuPont Marsh and Ridge Creation, has built hundreds of acres of new land that will have positive impacts on the coastal ecosystem. Marsh creation projects allow us to build land quickly and place it in very specific areas that will provide the best long-term benefits to our communities. The sediment used to build this project had to travel a very long distance. It starts in the Mississippi River, where it's dredged from the bottom. It then travels through pipes for miles downstream, over levees, and under a highway until it arrives at the project site. Additionally, rebuilding ridges restores the flow of water along the historic bayous and also provides storm surge protection and elevated habitat that allows trees and wildlife to prosper. The Barataria Basin is home to several examples of another significant aspect of coastal restoration, shoreline protection. This strategy is used to ensure major navigation channels and critical shores are protected, but its use has some serious limitations. Shoreline protection projects come in many types. You can have rocks, oyster reefs, or walls such as this. While these projects are very effective, they are also very expensive. The Barataria Waterway is susceptible to high rates of erosion due to boat traffic and other factors. These rocks help to protect these shorelines from washing away. One innovative technique uses oyster shells to create what is called living shoreline protection. CRCL has started a program to collect discarded shells and deploy them along eroding shores. The bags of shell will immediately start to break waves and will eventually become home to new oysters. And over time, the living shoreline will continue to build upon itself, providing habitat and slowing erosion. You can begin to see how the multiple lines of defense strategy laid out in the coastal master plan all work together. Another reason the Barataria Basin continues to lose coastal land at an alarming rate is saltwater intrusion. Historically, before man-made levees, annual floods from the Mississippi River provided fresh water and sediment to the surrounding wetlands to support thriving swamps and other freshwater habitats while keeping the saltwater at bay. Once the river was levied, these connections were lost and the intruding saltwater damaged and changed the habitat. But there are some very specific tools in the Coastal Restoration Toolbox to fix this problem. They include weirs, siphons, and freshwater diversions. Weirs are structures or sills that are placed at the bottoms of channels to try and keep salt water out. This works because the salt water is more dense and heavier and hits the weir, preventing it from getting into fresher marshes and killing swamps like these. Siphons and freshwater diversions reintroduce the Mississippi River to lower salinities in our estuaries. Siphons such as these depend on the height and pressure of the river to push the water through pipes. Freshwater diversions are different as they depend on culverts or gates to allow the water in. There is one other type of diversion which is crucial to the health of Louisiana's coastal wetlands and that is sediment diversion. These projects use the sediment-rich Mississippi River to rebuild coastal marsh. Sediment diversions are different than freshwater diversions and siphons. They are specifically designed to target times when the river is flooding and carrying large amounts of mud, silt, and sand downstream, mimicking the more natural processes that originally built all this land. The planned Midbarataria sediment diversion would once again allow marshes to flood and then drain, depositing sediment and nutrients which will help to keep our wetlands healthy and growing. You can see how the various types of restoration projects address specific issues related to Louisiana's land loss problems. Some of these projects have been completed and others are underway. This comprehensive strategy for restoration is dependent on these projects working together as a system to restore the coast. We must continue to make bold progress in our restoration efforts to fight the perils of land loss. There is a lot that we need to do, utilizing all the strategies available from sediment diversion to marsh creation. Progress is being made, but what happens if nothing is done? How does that affect Louisiana's unique culture and way of life? We are not in a position to even think about a future without action. This coast and the resources that it provides are so vital to so many people, communities, families, and the nation in general that we need all the action possible and we need it as quick as possible. You gotta have everybody at the table, navigation people, any kind of 
anybody that's going to be affected by an activity, you have to get them together and have them put their input in because that's what it's going to take to save it. It's not just my opinion. It's everybody. Louisiana's culture is very uniquely tied to the coastal communities, to the resources of these wetlands. Our culture is dependent on the coast. Without the coast, we lose what we love about the culture of southern Louisiana. We all fishermen. My son is a fisherman. I've been a fisherman. My daddy was a fisherman. We all fishermen, you know, and uh, the water's in our blood.